Hi everybody, I'm Francesco Rattalino, Dean at the ACP Europe Turing Campus, and virtually here with me I have uh, Professor Vittorio De Pedis. The topic of this episode of Let's Talk is the GameStop saga, which lessons can I learn from it? So, dear Vittorio, um, 11 years after Occupy Wall Street, it seems like the 99% is having the better of the 1%. Can you explain us what's going on today? Sure, Francesco, thanks for the answer. This is actually an interesting moment because some things have changed from those days, others have stayed the same and others have become more absurd. So let me try to explain the parabolic rise of this obscure stock, uh, GameStop, which is a brick and mortar shop, a chain of shops for selling computer games and other games, which is not doing particularly well. It's not in trouble, but remember that this stock was trading at $90 in 2013, and it went to $4 last year. And from $20 at the beginning of the year, if you see the charts, it's now roughly has been trading around $300, all in a matter of three weeks. This madness, this parabolic rise, is not only exclusive of GameStop, but is also going on in a bunch of other stocks, uh, some of which you can see in my notes here, some very very strange other names are, are having the same uh, the chart behavior. You can add uh, BB liquidators, you can add Kodak, Macy's, Dillard's, AMC is a classic, uh, feeds. These are all very strange behavior. What's going on? What, what can explain such a parabolic rise? Uh, very simple. Let's add a few elements together. In 2019, all of the American brokers decided to go uh, zero commissions. So it's now completely free for the majority of people that want to trade stocks in the USA. Add more things. Retail interest in stock trading went from less than 10% a year ago to 24% at the moment, which is a huge amount considering that normally this business is run by professionals and by algorithm. So physical retail people is now a quarter of the total. Add all these guys sitting at home with much time, sometimes a stimulus check, which has arrived through the mail for most families in the US, sometimes money which is not needed uh, to put food on the table, so it's available, and a lot of people which are, which are thinking of stock trading like a gamification of the stock market. So this, there is a lot of interest in it. Then new phenomena, Reddit and other and other social networks uh, with, uh, with uh, places like uh, Wall Street Bets. Just to give you an idea, this Reddit um, uh, social network went from 1.7 billions, uh, millions of members, 1.7 million of members 20 days ago to 6.7 billions three days ago, all in 20 days. So you can imagine how much participation there is. Add to this a huge surge in option trading, which also you can see in one of my slides here. You see how it went up, which increased volatility in an enormous way. Uh, just briefly, but technically, if somebody buys a call option on a stock, the seller of the call option has to buy a hedge. So a percentage called delta, which is got to hedge, not to expose himself, himself to unlimited loss. So the seller of the option has got to buy some stocks underlying. So this is pushing volatility higher, stock option higher, but more importantly, the underlying stock even higher. So if all the Reddit guys, the, the, this, this digital mob is suddenly excited and angry and all buying the same stock, trying to get a revenge on the short sellers, what happens is they send the, the stocks in parabolic rise. Now, short seller is the key element in this saga. If you look at the charts that I'm showing, which shows what's going on to a number of stocks which are under short, short selling is something which has been happening in the markets forever. But the, some stocks have an unprecedented amount of short interest. GameStop was unbelievably peculiar, and I've never seen it in my whole life, because 140% of the float was short. This is impossible. It's a mathematical impossibility. So more than 100% of the full amount of the shares are, have been sold short, which means it's been done synthetically. 
okay, which is the only way to achieve uh, such okay, a position. Okay, Victoria, just uh, let, let, me, let me stop you for, for a second because uh, you're getting very technical and, uh, and let me do a, a, little, a little summary. So if I understood well, I, I'm, I'm the man of the street, you know, uh, all these people uh, uh, working from home, uh, teleworking, uh, home working, in Italy we call it smart working, uh, I don't really want to say it's smart, but uh, they are having a lot of time, you know, that can be spent uh, to browse of the internet, uh, specifically on uh, uh, social uh, social media, and, and this one Reddit where people, you know, uh, share opinions, and, and immediately these uh, uh, this fashion and fad of, uh, you know, investing some money. Okay, I don't know if it, well they think it's investing, but but they they are actually doing it as it is a game okay but they think it's investing uh, um, it's became immediately popular so popular that uh, there are more shares sold okay than the actual value of the total number of shares that we have and as you said this is only possible if there is a massive view uh, utilization of uh, uh, of actually options okay option is not when you buy an option, you don't buy the actual shares, but you buy the right uh, to uh, actually get these shares in the future at the given price. So, and this is normally, as you said, not normal because the, 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 normally you trade the shares. And then of course, there are a lot of transaction done uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the options. Here is the other way around. There's more people uh, selling and buying uh, uh, and buying options uh, rather than selling and buying shares. And uh, I, I have I remember really a little from my finance classes, but I uh, I do remember that uh, when you trade on on options, you take a lot of risk. Okay, so yes. of course you can make a lot of money, but you also take a lot of risk. Okay, this is this is very interesting, but eventually who is really driving this speculation because you, you know on one hand we have uh, the hedge funds uh, the, which have been considered the root of all evil and on the other hand we have all these the, the, yes these new new guys you know that the, we called it the 99% or whatever but who is really driving the speculation because it's not really yeah, yeah me. that's a that's a that's a great point so as you explained uh, because there is so much short interest who's got the short interest the hedge funds. Then the Reddit guys discovered uh, by chance or by mob that there is so much short run. Now, if you are short, you've got to buy back the stock at some point because you've got to deliver what you sold. Okay, so you can only borrow temporarily what you owe. So they found out and with such an incredible constellation of events, they gathered together and they started pushing the stock up by buying it. So the hedge funds, which are normally the strong hand, became the weak hand because they were forced through their stop losses to be executed to buy back the shares that they didn't. So the hedge funds, which were short in GameStop, but also in all the other stocks that we mentioned, which are in my list, they had to, they're forced to buy back the shares. They hope they went down. Instead, they went up. They're losing a ton of money. And I can tell you who's losing what. You correctly said, there has been a demonization of the activity of these hedge funds. Now, I'm not going to be defending hedge funds per se. They are part of the market. They've always been there. They have a function, including short selling. If we've got time, I can mention that. But in any case, these guys, I can name at least two names of big guys, Melvin Capital and Citron Research. These are two very famous guys, uh, hedge funds, which are targeting specific stock because they think they're going to go to zero. So they have the opposite views of the Reddit crowd. So they've been forced to buy through the parabolic rise, adding to the fire. So the Reddit crowd was buying stocks. They were buying options. The seller of the options had to buy stocks to Delta hedge. And the hedge fund on the low end of the stick had to cover their position, buying more stocks, which create this parabolic rise. Okay. So idea, okay. okay you want to have an idea of the money it's lost? Like, you know... It seems like when you go on uh, uh, and playing at the roulette at the casino, 
that in order to cover your losses, you are doubling up and you uh, even betting more and more and more. So this is the kind of situation we have. Okay, then I have a, then I have a, another I have another question, um, and uh, it is uh, uh, what's going on with uh, Robin Hood? You know, I've been reading the the the, the news. And, uh, and I came across uh, uh, the, this name, Robin Hood, and uh, I know it's a platform, and uh, I thought it was a platform that given the uh, zero commission that was charging to, um, you know, to the users, was kind of a, a open platform to everybody, but, uh, but you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, bad news about uh, Robin Hood. Uh, basically um, telling that uh, they were backing the edge funds and uh, stopping uh, the, 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 this, uh, um, let me say, this Reddit crowd from, uh, um, from doing their trades. So tell us a little bit more about uh, what is happening, you know, with Robinhood and with these uh, uh, trading platforms, because uh, that's where the, the, the trading is actually happening and why they had to shut, to shut down. Yes, th this is exactly what happened. They're getting a lot of stick from the Reddit crowd and the supporters of, Hedy, of the Reddit crowd, which come from all over the place, as, as we will see in a moment. So Robinhood is, a, is an online broker, like many others, like the classic one, Schwab, any trade, et cetera, but it's new and is zero commissions. So if you ask yourself, how can a trading platform make money if it doesn't charge a penny to the users? How does Robinhood and Virtue and Blue and others that we know, or Revolut or many others that we know make money? It's very simple. They sell the order flows that they receive from their users to the market makers. This story is a bit complicated. If you want to follow it, it's a fascinating story. So Robinhood gets all these users to trade these things that didn't uh, trade before. Just to give you an idea, Robinhood now has 2.7 million users and he had 600,000 one year ago, okay? 2.7 million users. So he gets this huge amount of order flows. These order flows are directed some, somewhere. Where, for example, to Citadel. Citadel is a name you might not know, but it's one of the biggest market makers, electronic market makers in the world, and a hedge fund, funnily enough. And Citadel is also an investor in Melvin Capital, one of those two hedge funds I mentioned before, which are losing their shirt. They lost about $6.5 billion in this saga. So they are, and they had to recapitalize those guys with an infusion of three billions of cash in equity, covered. Uh, on Tuesday. So Robinhood gets in trouble because he's passing the order flow to Citadel, but because of this surge, he received a request from DCC, DTCC, which is the Depository Trust Clearing House. The clearing house is the exchange behind, which clears the trade, puts together the buyer with the seller on three days' notice. Okay, I buy today, I settle three days from today. We exchange stocks versus money. So when the trading rises, when the amount trade rises, the risk for the exchange goes up. So he asked for more collateral to the traders, to the providers of the flow. In this case, Robinhood. Robinhood is a small platform. It's new. They don't have much money. So when they receive a request from the trading, from the clearinghouse to raise their deposit for security reasons, with them by 1.3 billion, and he must be obliged in two hours, they panicked. And they had to raise, in the last four days, they managed to raise something like 3.4 billion from their own shareholders, which are hedge, other hedge funds and private equity funds like Sequoia and Reddit. So they, the, the other alternatives they had, they made a terrible job of explaining this, was to stop trading. And stop trading meant stop trading the things that people trade, which were GameStop and AMC and these exactly stocks that we discussed. So they stopped their trading. They stopped buying from the users and the users revolted to say, hey, it's working a new side. You're, you're like defending the hedge funds if you don't let us trade. In reality, Robinhood was ju just trying not to go bankrupt. 
or to be excluded from the clearing house. Without a clearing house, you cannot have a market. There is all this uh, situation going on. Uh, every day we discover there is a new target. Today I just discovered that the, the, the Reddit crowd is betting on, uh, on silver, okay? So they move from stocks to, uh, uh, to actually uh, you know, materials and stuff, so, and commodities. So, so it's, it's, very, it's, it's very strange and it's very interesting, but uh, eventually, you know, and I thank you so much for, for your explanation, also for, for giving some technical links because it's a, it's a quite complicated, you know, uh, uh, flow of, uh, of, of, of events that you need to follow in order to understand, you know, the impact of this. But uh, my, my last question is that, okay, you know, we understood that, uh, uh, that for many people, uh, and you said like 25% of all the trades now are made by individuals. So for many people trading on the, on the, on the, on the stock market, on the financial market is becoming a little bit like an um, online game, something like that. On the other hand, we have a Reddit, uh, which is a social network that um, allow people to, to gain access to maybe a lot of information on one hand, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, reach the, the, the necessary critical mass you know, to, to have an impact on the financial markets, which is maybe okay, maybe good, I don't know. But uh, uh, my question is, is Reddit you know, democratizing Wall Street or is it just another bubble? You know, because I have the feeling I don't know how long this can last. Uh, that's a tough one because I would agree with you. I, I think it's a new peculiar Professor Damodaran, that we all know, the guru of corporate finance, thinks that things are never going back, to go back to before uh, with this, with this, after this episode. I would agree with him, but I think at the end, the usual winners will be the usual winners because the profits, astonishing profits made by the Reddit crowd so far are on paper. You, you, as a practical people, we know that the money is yours when you cash it in. If you don't sell or you sell too late, all this bubble can go. Forget about what I think. I think this is going to end up very badly for the Reddit crowd. That's my opinion, but that's irrelevant. What's relevant is the phenomenon. We also have the influence influencing people which are pushing this crowd. I would encourage you, everyone who's interested to go because people talk about it, but don't do it. I went into Reddit and I went into our Wall Street beds and read the threads and read uh, what's written in there and the dialogue. I will tell you that it's extremely aggressive, extremely hard. It, profanity is immense. They hate lot of there is a lot of hate in this so it's like a revenge on the unlucky situation of many but this cannot be a general movement is based on hate add the influencing there is very what's funny is very some very rich people are influencing this crowd very strongly uh, a tweet by elon musk sent a obscure ridiculous uh, uh, altcoin called Dogecoin up 8,000% uh, 8, in one day. So Elon Musk is an influencer for this crowd. Michael Barry, which is, you probably know, is the owner of Sion Capital, which is the protagonist of the big short, the movie. And you have siding with these guys, Senator Ted Cruz, which is a Republican, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, which is the most left-wing protagonist of the political scheme. So uh, all these guys are exciting nerves of the Reddit crowd. Is it a bubble? Personally, I think so. I don't think it's going to end well for a simple reason. The hedge funds which are losing money are also delevering fast, meaning they're buying back the shorts, losing money. And if you reduce the short, the fuel on which this parabolic rise is built is going to diminish. So the more they buy back, the, more, the less you have ammunition to, and it's going to be more painful. Look at what's happening today. Those stocks are down 50%. Now, 50% uh, might not be too much if it's up 1,000, 
but give it a few days and you will see uh, how it ends. Okay, okay, Vitor. I think we can close here and uh, there will be updates. Thank you so much.